Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme is a movie musical that aired on the Disney Channel in 1990. It featured some pretty big names in music at the time. Cindy Lauper, Bobby Brown, Art Garfunkel, Little Richard. It also starred actors like Woody Harrelson and Howie Mandel. This movie had a very large cast overall, and I'm pretty sure it would have been considered star-studded for 1990. It even says so on the movie poster. However, it's not currently available on Disney+, Plus. although with my luck they'll probably add it right after I post this video, and then this part will sound dumb and outdated, but I feel like there is a reason they've kept it out of the general circulation thus far. The reason is that it's weird. It's really weird. It's one of those bizarre dark things that aired in the 90s and probably lives repressed in the brains of everyone who ever watched it. I forgot about this movie. Just completely forgot about it. Just went around, living my life, oblivious to the secrets that my own hippocampus was keeping. And then I saw a very brief clip from this movie. I don't even remember where I saw it, because the second the visual touched my eyeballs, my brain just went into standby mode. Accessing archives. Never have a my brain pulled up vague, disturbing flashes. Fragments of visually confusing memories. You've got to save me! The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. And I thought, no. This can't be real. There is no way that this was actually a movie. Well, hang on to your tuffet, because we're going to talk about the fever dream that was Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme. Another perfect day. The movie opens with an introduction to Dan Gilroy as Gordon Goose, Mother Goose's son. He lives in a normal, human-looking bedroom with a cartoon character wardrobe of just white shirts. By the way, this Dan Gilroy is probably not the Dan Gilroy that you're thinking of, the writer-producer who worked on Nightcrawler and several episodes of Andor. This is a different guy who has pretty much only done this and dated Madonna. Just so you know. Gordon then exits the room into a cacophony of colorful madness. It makes my outfit make sense. Mother Goose is a human woman in a goose-themed feathery ensemble sitting in a goose chair with a pet goose named Honker. And she is currently crafting a new nursery rhyme. Wee Willy Winky ran through the town. Then Gordon is set upon by an Oompa Loompa. It's supposed to be Wee Willy Winky springing to life, but it's an Oompa Loompa. Don't tell me you created another weirdo character, Mom. Yes, dear, Wee Willy Winky. There's conflict between Gordon and his mother. Can we live in a real neighborhood? Like... Beaver Cleaver or Ozzy and Harriet, you know, normal. He does not like living in Rhymeland, and he does not like the Rhymies. That's what they call the living nursery rhyme characters. I don't like the Rhymies. They're just so strange. How did this seemingly human woman become a godlike being in this alternate realm? with the ability to just create life with her words. Gordon leaves for work, and we get our first glimpses of Rhymeland. The denizens manhandle him in a way that is supposed to be supportive and encouraging. We'll never have a 
It's not. Look at the set here. It is clearly an indoor space with like blue paper glued to the ceiling and misshapen white pillows taped to the blue paper. I wish Disney would add this to Disney Plus. I really want a version of this movie with good crisp quality so I can actually see what I'm looking at. Gordon is beset upon by children, so he calls out to their mother, the old woman who lives in the shoe. Hey, old woman who lives in the shoe! Oh, you're coming all handsome. You wanna tell these kids to behave? I've got so many, I, I don't know what to do. I'm going to assume that you know these old nursery rhymes, or you at least know how to Google them to find out what they say, but just, in case, just so we're on the same page here, here's how this one goes. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. So she gave them some broth without any bread and whipped them all soundly and put them to bed. So there's that. The old woman is um, not old and she is clearly very active. <sighs> Wait till your fathers get home. Fathers, plural. Uh, do all of the fathers live there too? How many fathers are there? I have questions. How do you get so many kids? Well, what can I say? The stork has a crush on me. They repeat the wouldn't know what to do with them joke again. You got any kids? Me? I wouldn't know what to do with them. That makes two of us. We get to see how Gordon walks. He encounters Little Bo Peep, played by Shelley Duvall, and they bicker nursery rhyme lines back and forth. I'm Little Bo Peep, and I've lost my sheep, and I don't know where to find them. Well, relax. Your sheep are always missing. Yeah, but this time they've been missing a little bit longer than usual. I know you could not have possibly guessed this, but her sheep are missing. Well, leave them alone, and they'll come home. Wagging their tails behind them? Well, I doubt if they'd be wagging their tails in front of them. And so is Mother Goose. Well, her pet goose Honka was there, but she wasn't. She never goes anywhere without that stupid goose. Maybe we better check it out. Gordon is pretty concerned about this, so they go to confirm that his mother is indeed gone. No, I mean because of my mother. She wouldn't leave without Honker. They go outside and meet the itsy bitsy spider. He talks like this. You know everyone knows, spiders wear web-printed leotards. It's why Spider-Man's outfit makes so much sense. Your mama? <laughs> yeah, I know where your mama is. Excuse me a minute. They ask him where the missing sheep and Mother Goose are, and he's like, sure, I know the answer, but first, I've got to do my whole thing. What are you doing? You see? Itsy Bitsy Spider climbs up the water spout. What age group is this movie for? On one hand, I feel like it's gotta be for very young children, but on the other hand, it's so weird and unsettling. And the progression is so frustratingly stilted. Instead of being a plot-driven narrative, the main characters just move slowly around and encounter the nursery rhyme characters one at a time. And then the nursery rhyme lines are just ham-fisted into the dialogue. As I was climbing up the water spout, as I have a tendency to do, so Gordon's like, okay, get to the point, which is what I'm also saying. Get to the point. <sighs> Shut up, Jack! Yikes. But Itsy gets distracted by his spout antics, except this time when he goes into the puddle, he does not reemerge. He's gone. They check their shoes to make sure they haven't murdered him. They think maybe Itsy went to go torment Little Miss Muffet, so they start to drive to her. And on the way, they encounter the three men in a tub. You know, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. It's ZZ Top. I didn't know I knew what ZZ Top looked like, but apparently I do. They also stop to visit Mary Mary Quite Contrary. Mistress Mary Quite Contrary. How does your garden grow? Oh, it's a mess. Yeah, it's Katie Seagal. The cockle shells are being eaten by aphids, and the pretty maids are getting uglier by the minute. Mary's whole thing is gardening and disagreeing with whatever you say. You don't know where Little Miss Muffet is, do you? No. Hmm. 
She's just being contrary. I am not. Now, no one knows what the original nursery rhyme actually means. There are several theories, but none of them are this. I mean, look at this suggested meaning from Wikipedia. Quite contrary is said to be a reference to her unsuccessful attempt to reverse ecclesiastical changes affected by her father, Henry VIII, and her brother, Edward VI. Or it means that her house is upside down. Who's to say? Also, this scene has no bearing on the plot. Nothing happens, and they learn nothing. So Gordon and Bo Peep continue on to Old Mother Hubbard's diner. The diner has no food, though, per the nursery rhyme about Old Mother Hubbard's cupboard being bare. Two cheeseburgers. Two yummy, delicious, juicy cheeseburgers? Sorry, fall out. Uh, just some French fries. All out of fries. Sorry. Bo Peep and Gordon ask if they have any food. I think we have some bones. <laughs> Why did she deliver the line like that? They don't actually have any bones, but now I'm going to need to say that anytime I have company in my home. Hey, do you want something to eat? Yeah, sure. What do you have? I think we have some bones. Remember, at this point in the movie, they're looking for Little Miss Muffet because they think the spider will be there and they think the spider knows where Mother Goose is. Yeah, can we get some information? Sure. <laughs> okay. We're looking for my mother. What is that thing ambling around in the background that says feed me? They decide to check with Mary of Mary Had a Little Lamb, who is currently watching a news broadcast about how Mother Goose is missing. Mother Goose is still missing. If you have any knowledge of her whereabouts, please contact, um, somebody. The news transitions to a horrifying game show. Next question. A pie is made of four and twenty of them. By the way, Mary is played by Cindy Lauper, lead actress from the hit 1988 movie, Vibes co-starring Jeff Goldblum. Gordon apparently took Mary on a date one time, and he's like still bitter about it. One time I took her to the drive-in, the lamb sat between us. Talk about getting fleeced. I do like the promo we see for a dating show. Today our fabulous bachelorette will get to rub-a-dub-dub -dub with one of three men in a tub. Apparently you too could date your preferred member of ZZ Top. Mary's in kind of a toxic relationship with the lamb. Get the door, Mary. I am not in the mood for company. I am. Now get the, the door, days. Mary. Who's played by Woody Harrelson. Gordon is super rude to Mary. And you guys haven't changed a bit. You sure have. Talk about a nosedive into an empty pool. <laughs> Damn, dude. I know it didn't work out between the two of you, but relax. So can I get you folks some refreshments, coffee, tea? Do you have any bones? Apparently the lamb, whose name is Lou, has ruined Mary's life. He used to be a cute little lamb, and it was fun having him follow me everywhere I went until he turned into a gigantic, obnoxious, meddling sheep. I feel like there's a lesson there, but not really a lesson for children. I lost two wonderful husbands all because of Lou's insistence on following me everywhere, if you know what I mean. No, Mary, I am four years old watching this movie. I don't know what you mean. Please explain it to me. Gordon and Bo Peep just like awkwardly leave, <laughs> as you do when you're visiting friends in a relationship and they just start fighting in front of you. But after they go, Mary and Lou disappear. By the way, why do some of the Rhymies seem to disappear after Gordon and Bo Peep talk to them, but not all of them? They find a ransom note for Mother Goose on the car. No, it's a ransom note. You mean the cops kidnapped Mother Goose? Quiet. Was that the psycho sound effect? And nothing else. Anyway, the ransom note is for $650 and two chili dogs to be brought to Peter Piper's Pepper Patch. There's a pickling machine in the Pepper Patch. Peter Piper speaks in alliteration, per the phrasing of the nursery rhyme. My rhyme, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, is particularly puzzling. People can't pronounce it properly, so they presume that I'm peculiar and they purposely persecute poor Peter Piper. Even though the note directed them to Peter Piper's Pepper Patch, uh, Peter says that the note was probably a 
fake prank and was likely written by the crooked man who walked a crooked mile. So they find the crooked man and his dog that looks like some sort of weird fetish nightmare. Then this bizarre undulation happens for no reason. Huh? So they do one of those Scooby-Doo-esque door gags chasing the crooked man. <laughs> this happens. You can see the set wobbling. The crooked man wrote the ransom note, but he doesn't actually have Mother Goose. So Gordon and Bo Peep's search continues, and I don't think they actually remember the plan at this point. By the way, if you think about this plot for just like a second, it is very intense. So Mother Goose has the power of creation, which essentially makes her God. So God has disappeared, and her son, who despises her creation, is forced to go looking for her. Jack and Jill remind me of Raggedy Ann and Andy, although the longer I look at them, the more I see there's not actually a resemblance. They also talk like they've been in couples therapy and learned to communicate. Oh well, yes, even though we are a couple, we both have individual needs, and I feel that my needs are really not being met. Well, Jill, I respect your need for needs, but I too have needs. But it's not really effective in overcoming their core relationship issues. Jack, my needs are not being met. Well, Actually, what about my needs? Well, what are your needs? Well, I you have help you. Unrelated, Bo Peep's costume has more cleavage than you would expect for a children's movie. Since Jack and Jill are also ineffective at fetching water, Gordon is just gonna go get it himself. Bo Peep would help, but she doesn't want to get into a relationship. Mm, all right, but watch your step. I don't want to start a relationship. What do you mean? I don't know. No, it doesn't make any more sense in context either. The transitions in this movie sure are something. Looking at the set and the cast and comparing the two, I am realizing that production probably spent all of their money on the guest appearance salaries, and it just like made the set out of random things that they bought at AC Moore with a coupon. ZZ Top comes back and finally leads them to Little Miss Muffet's Tuffet. Gordon and Bo Peep have shrunk. You just have to think to shrink. While their clothes stayed the same size, so they look like this now, and I feel like that hat is not in the correct proportions. I feel like I'm not moving through this movie fast enough, even though I'm leaving a lot of weird stuff out. I mean, we are only 40 minutes into this movie, but even still, I want you to listen to this dialogue and pay attention to the delivery. Can I fluff your tuffet? No, no, my tuffet's uh, fine, just good. And the curds and whey, it's just the way I like them. Everything, just the way I like it. Little Miss Muffet also has a really low cut top. Okay, so plot twist, Itsy is there. So right now, the only disappeared characters are Mother Goose, Mary and the Lamb. Itsy has a dance number, and in a production with a higher budget, giving a spider who has eight legs a dance number would be really interesting, but not here. Camera angles are insane. They finally get the story. Mother Goose was abducted. These aliens came down, abducted your mama, and took her to outer space. So because we found Itzy, we need a new plot direction. So Bo Peep theorizes, for no real reason, that Mother Goose was taken to the real world through outer space. Okay. And maybe, just maybe, some inexplicable phenomenon from the real world somehow intruded into Rhineland and took Mother Goose. Ooh. And now they have to go find old King Cole so he can tell them how to get to outer space. The scene cuts and they're just at the next location. And I don't know if this counts as a musical number. We want the king! We want the king! Where is the fool? King Cole is Little Richard in an all pink ensemble, and he gets a full musical number. 
It's probably in his contract. His backup singers are blackbirds in a pie. his song and there are more insane camera angles and old king cole is pissed how dare you how dare you before he laughs like a maniac and what is that scepter gordon tries to impress upon him the seriousness of the situation serious uh Saying the word serious is the most terrible crime that can be committed in my presence. Apparently, saying the word serious is a crime? And I know old King Cole is a merry old soul, but there is no indication in the nursery rhyme that he will imprison and torture you for not being as merry as he is. <laughs> And imprison and torture Gordon they do. Once again, I'm getting fetish vibes. He gets sung at by a kiss themed band. Been a bad boy, a very bad boy. We'll have to punish you. It's gonna hurt me more than it hurts you. What is happening? I I feel insane. I feel like this still just only exists in my head. Like, even though I'm making this video, I'm going to post it, and I'm gonna, like, you know, include clips from the movie, and you guys are going to just comment, like, Christina, there's nothing there. It's a blank screen. You're watching a blank screen. I think you need help. These guys show up with their kinky tickle feathers to make Gordon marry. It'll make you marry! <laughs> yes, and believe me, we're professionals. <laughs> then they talk to the audience. Kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> no, don't acknowledge me. And yes, they tickle him. <laughs> Bo Peep pleads their case to the king, who is just like, Hey, relax. If our omnipotent deity ever abandoned us, we would cease to exist. But since nobody's disappearing, there is nothing to worry about. <laughs> and then a bunch of people cease to exist. Ooh, ooh. The pacing of these disappearances is inconsistent. Little Richard shouts his lines. Now, there is something to worry about. You're right. He sends Gordon and Bo Peep to Humpty Dumpty, who is played by Howie Mandel. Hi, Humpty. Long time no see. Well, I was in exile. <laughs> I get exile. And Humpty Dumpty is, in fact, pure nightmare fuel. Silly me. What? Well, I'm starting to look uh, double A, extra large. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> he makes a lot of egg puns, but I am distracted by his face. As per the nursery rhyme, he has a great fall and hits the ground with a very nauseating sound. <laughs> now he's in pieces, just scattered all around them. Humpty can still speak from the piece of shell that contains his face. <laughs> Just yoking. <laughs> oh. But his mind is scrambled. By the way, that's my joke. They did not make that joke about his mind being scrambled in the movie. Humpty did use the word scrambled, like when we first encountered his character and he was making egg pun after egg pun, but I feel like they really should have held that one and then used it when it like made sense in context. Gordon and Bo Peep decide to go to the police about Mother Goose's disappearance, and I have no idea why they haven't involved the authorities before now. But all the police have disappeared. In fact, a lot of people are disappearing now much more quickly, including this newspaper guy. Extra! Uh, read all about it. Other ghosts are still missing. Son is incompetent. Time is running out. Gordon and Bo Peep end up in like Georgie Porgy's bar. And just look at these patrons. Horrifying. 
Why do these look like something out of a scary movie? If you were a child and you saw these creatures on the street, you wouldn't be like, yay, nursery rhymes. You'd be like, where is my dad? I hope he has his gun. And this guy? Forget it, he's already seeing double. How many drugs went into making this movie? Gordon visits a private detective office. It's the three blind mice. Suddenly, it's like an old black and white noir film because the mice are colorblind. Although, are they colorblind? Or are they like blind blind? The one guy just takes off his glasses that also have the mouse nose on them and it just feels like this movie is melting. The three blind mice also get a dance number, but they're ultimately useless and Gordon just leaves. He goes outside to find Bo Peep talking to Stanley, who is not a nursery rhyme character, but there he is. His name is Stanley. Hey, take it easy, Stick. And you know what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You know what I mean? Hey, I got your jelly bean, Stanley. Gordon is jealous, and he expresses that jealousy with a weird physicality and a breathless line delivery. What were you doing with that creep? Just talking. At least he's interested in what I have to say. Yeah, I guess he just wanted to find out if you were a brilliant conversationalist. It's certainly a choice. They pick up Simple Simon, who was hitchhiking. No, that's your rhyme, remember? Simple Simon met a pieman going to the fair. A pieman, a pieman. Oh, a pieman, that's who that guy in the van was. Simon disappears, and then Gordon and Bo Peep have a heart to heart. I like you, okay? I like your company. I like being with you. You do? I do. And things kind of turn romantic. They lean in to kiss when suddenly they're interrupted. You've got to save me! So they go to the fair to look for the cow who jumped over the moon, as you do. The dish and the spoon are there. They're, they're just, they're there. And again, I don't understand why this entire movie looks like it was filmed inside of a funhouse mirror. Like, is that what children wanted to see in 1990? I can't remember a single other thing from my childhood that either looked like this or was acted like this. I am not familiar with Dan Gilroy's full body of work, and I really don't think he acted in very much outside of this, but why are all of his line deliveries so strange? This is important. We need to talk to this cow. See, that's where we have to go. We need the cow to take us over the moon. You gotta help us. You got to help us. We need the cow to jump over the moon. Anyway, the cow agrees to help. Can you really? And so up they go. Now, I waited until this exact moment to tell you something. Dan Gilroy and Shelley Duvall are in a romantic relationship in real life. And this movie is where they first met. This is the setting in which they fell in love. Supposedly, they are still together now, to this very day. I could have told you this earlier, like when they were about to kiss, but I didn't. I waited because I wanted this scene to serve as the backdrop to when you learn this information. I love this! Hang on. <laughs> you could cut the sexual tension with a knife. This goes on for a while. They also run into ZZ Top again before going warp speed into and through a storybook. Finally, they find Mother Goose. Where are we? What's going on? We're in the real world. Okay. And this is a real little boy, Michael! Whoa! I don't know if I'm laughing or crying. Michael is excited that they are there. This is so excellent. 
I mean, I've got Little Bo Peep, the cow who jumped with the moon. Now you can act out your stories for me instead of Mother Goose just telling them to me. But they plead for freedom because he is inadvertently destroying their world. All of Rhymeland is disappearing. Mother Goose created Rhymeland and all the Rhymies and... They wouldn't exist if she wasn't there. Fortunately, Michael is contrite, and I don't really want to criticize a child actor, especially considering that the grown-up professional actors in this movie are doing such a, a weird job, but Michael gives such a dead-eyed performance. You mean I'm a bad guy? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just I'm her biggest fan and I wanted her all to myself. Okay, Kathy Bates. Wait, so Mother Goose is basically God in Rhymeland? So how does this child have the ability to reach into another realm and extract its deity? What powers does the child have? I fear him. Am I gonna get punished for this? Of course not, dear. Now, punishments in this story are only for people over 18. Michael puts Mother Goose, Gordon, and Bo Peep back into Rhymeland with his child god powers, and then things go back to normal. They try to end this movie with like a moral about how being different is good. There's nothing wrong with being different. Why, that's what makes life interesting. If we were all alike, life would be very, very boring. But then Mother Goose has decided that it's time. Time to reveal a secret. What do you mean? I mean, I made you up. I wanted a rhyme, so... You mean, I'm a rhymey? You are the first rhymey. This must be triggering an existential crisis. Your life is a lie. It's like The Truman Show. No, it is worse than The Truman Show. Because not only is your life a lie, but you think you're human. You think you are a real being, but you're not. You're a figment of the imagination of a waterfowl-obsessed woman who you once believed was your mother. Since you were my first creation, your rhyme wasn't very good. I was so embarrassed I didn't want people to read it, so I just told everybody that you were my real son. On top of him, not just being a rhymey or being the first rhymey, Mother Goose reveals that his rhyme was so stupid that she just lied and said he was her son. Th that was better. But don't worry, we get to hear some of the rhyme. Gordon Goose's pet got loose early in the morning. What's the use of having a good... Oh, brother, you're right. This is a terrible rhyme. Gordon does have a relatively minor crisis of spirit. What do I do now? I don't feel normal. I don't feel like a rhymey. I'm confused. Where do I belong? But then he and Bo Peep gently flirt with each other and decide to go off together and find her missing sheep. Maybe we could uh, look for those sheep. Together, I'm sure we could find them. We end on a reprise of the movie's first song. Except Gordon is now an active participant in the shenanigans. And he gets a new jacket and a new hat. Having lost his sense of self, Gordon now sacrifices the last vestiges of his identity to submit himself fully to the Rhymeland way of life and integrate himself into the Rhymies he once so deeply despised. The end. This is unrelated to Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme, but I played a Mother Goose themed CD-ROM computer game as a kid called Mixed Up Mother Goose. It's for children, it's not dark and bizarre like Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme, except that I kind of remember it that way because the two are so closely linked in my head. As a child, I must have just assumed that all Mother Goose related properties were interconnected 
somehow. I forgot about both Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme and this game for years, but when the movie burst forth from my subconscious into my conscious mind, it dragged this CD-ROM game along with it. The premise was that all of the nursery rhyme characters have gotten their rhymes all mixed up, so you need to go around and complete tasks or collect a bunch of items in order to return them to the character that they actually belong to, so that character can once again find their purpose. Like, you have to reunite Little Bo Peep with her sheep, I think you have to get Mary Mary Quite Contrary a watering can, and I think Little Miss Muffet herself is lost and you need to lead her back to her tuffet. You can play this game now, online. What if, at the end of the game, you find out that you're not a human playing a computer game, you're actually a character in the game, your life is a lie, your memories aren't real, this is where you live now.